The time when people can come in our community and get us to vote for them so that they can be our political leaders and tell us what to do and what not to do is long gone. So we want to talk about and discuss tethers and cones. See, they are ultimately the same creature. They are opposite ends of the same coin. Heads and tails of the same coin in, in, in a sense. Right? Their methods and their approach are different. See, coons, <clears throat> excuse me, are people who are basically of our lineage. People who walk off the, the, uh, the plantations with us, essentially. People who bought into meritorious manumissions. This is where you get your, your black entertainment industry from. Black entertainers. Black entertainers. And when I say entertainers, I'm talking about athletes. I'm talking about actors, comedians, anybody who is within the media sphere for anything that Hollywood or the entertainment industry acknowledges. You are a black entertainer. Understand. The most talented of us aren't the ones who are in mainstream media. The ones, those of us who are willing to go along with the program are the ones who get endorsed by the power structure. Meritorious manumissions. Basically, if you were an enslaved black person who was willing to sell out other black people for, say, plotting a revolt, plotting an escape, you would be paid handsomely by the white power structure for doing so. Meritorious manumissions. It has taken a different shape and form. You are out there to mislead and manipulate black people. But the same rules apply. You are paid handsomely for all the black people that you mislead, manipulate. You drag into the nether regions of society in order for them to be easily snatched up and, and coerced and diseased by the white supremacist power structure. Now, tethers. Essentially, you are people who are within the diaspora. They're basically here to replace us, essentially. They're here to replace us. They are here to take our place. What, wherever they are throughout the diaspora, whether they are Haitian, Jamaican, whatever they are, wherever they are within the diaspora, you know, Puerto Rican, Latino, even East Indian. Because you don't get to be that brown without any African, any heritage. These people come over here and they want to replace us. Look at what Puerto Ricans and Latinos are trying to do with hip hop. They are literally trying to erase us out of the history of a genre of music that we created so that they can put themselves in that place. Why? Because that is their reward. If they can make it happen, that is their reward from white supremacy. If they can do something to destroy us and take us down another couple of notches, that's their reward. You get to have hip hop. You get to have rap music. If you can successfully do this, you get to have this and you get to you get to earn a lot of the uh, economic and social benefits that come from it. Not all of them, but some of them. And this is where we are right now. And this is why we are delineating. This is why projects like what the Juan B are putting out there with his, his music history to recognize she's documentary about hip hop. This is why these things are so important. This is why they're so important. But this is why the this is part of the reason why the tethers are so active now because hip hop is a commodity it is marketed and 
It is sold all over the planet. Everywhere you go, even in cultures that, for the most part, don't even like black people, hip hop exists there. It's, it's, it's uncanny. And they want to market that. The 50th anniversary of hip hop is this passes. And now hip hop is going to be introduced into the Olympics. And this is what they want. They want to capitalize off of it. They want to erase it out of it like they did country music, like they did R&B, like they did rock and roll, like they did heavy metal, like they did every other form of music that has been spawned from American society, which was produced and created by us, Foundation of Black Americans, the descendants of Freedmen's. This is what they do. Excuse me. The coons that are amongst us. This is why they are a problem. That is why we are delineating. We are drawing a line in the sand. You are either fighting with us or you are fighting against us with our enemy. The sad part is they don't even see that the enemy is only using them temporarily and will cast them aside. Getting a paycheck suffice for them in the now they don't even care about 2, 3, 5, 10 20, 30 years from now they don't even care about them being completely dismantled and destroyed by the white supremacist power structure they don't even care about that all they care about is what they can benefit now if they can get a fat paycheck now they'll gladly try to help destroy and dismantle us but we cannot be destroyed. We cannot be dismantled. The documentary microphone check by Tariq Nasheed. You can go against it, but then you're going to sit there and tell that tell the people who were actually there that they are lying. The people who were the founders of these particular elements of hip hop, you're going to tell them that they weren't the ones who did it. How do you do that? How do you tell somebody who was there in the beginning that they weren't there in the beginning and be believed? <clears throat> Excuse me. It is it's ridiculous. And too many Latinos are actually jumping on board with this whole situation of trying to take hip hop from us. Oh, we were there in the beginning, Holmes. We were there. We were there. You know, we were there. I took a picture. I shined somebody's shoes. I I tied the shoelaces. I went and got him a milkshake from a carryout. Dude, bro, because you were in the vicinity doesn't mean that you are an originator, bro. You took a picture 10 years after this had already been a thing. You're not an originator, bro. You came after the fact. You carried crates for somebody. Doesn't make you an originator, dude. You were a sidebar, sidestep person who didn't matter you carry crates you understand you were standing at a fence looking through the fence at a party because your latino puerto rican parents didn't want you you know what i'm saying dealing with black people like that so you had to listen to the music from your balcony you had to look through the fence you know what i'm saying that surrounded your community and just be an observer but you claimed you were there and you helped discovered it because you heard the music. Dude, shut the fuck up. That's some of the stupidest shit I've ever heard in my life. You understand what I'm saying? That's stupid, bro. That's that's ridiculous. We are 50-50 with hip-hop. Dude, the mess smoke couldn't be more prevalent with you dudes. But anyway, I don't want to just talk about one thing. This is about tethers and coons. See, they are always going to be one of the major tools and assets for the white supremacist power structure against us because they are people who will live in our communities. They're people that we see every day. It's just like the Matrix. You never know who an agent is. These people are still a part of that system and that makes them our enemy. You have to understand, most of these people are not ready to be unplugged. And many of them are so inert, so hopelessly dependent on the system that they will fight Us, but one of them. What are they? Sentient programs. They can move in and 
amount of any software still hardwired to the system. That means that anyone we haven't unplugged is potentially an agent. Inside the matrix, they are everyone, and they are no one. We have survived by hiding from them, by running from them, but they are the gatekeepers. They are guarding all the doors, they are holding all the keys, which means that sooner or later, someone is going to have to fight them. So, Coons and tethers are dangerous to us. They always have been. They always have been. During the Haiti Revolution, coons were a detriment to them, but you know what they did with the coons? They sell out the tethers. They basically shuffled them loose the mortal coin. The mafioti means the black collaborators. They really have to get them out of their face first. Macandal, what he's really known, a lot of what he know, he went after them first. Before, before he poisoned the European, he poisoned the black collaborators. And they were all in the house Negroes. Come on. And one thing about Macandal, he realized this. He understood that the black collaborators, we call them coons today, how they will sabotage black progress in order to get individual trinkets. So Macandal, he saw that early on. So when it came to poisoning the white supremacists, Malcolm Dahl, he understood that we got to get rid of these collaborators first. So he poisoned many of the black collaborators before he started to poison the white supremacists. They don't tell you that during our entrapment here in America, that there were slave revolts and rebellions just about every year we were here. They don't tell you about that. And the main reason why those rebellions, revolts did not work was because of the coons who lived amongst us. And us being so, I guess, intimidated or afraid of the power structure, we allowed these individuals to leave the plantation when we did, instead of burying them there on the plantation. And now they have offspring. Four, five, six gener generations later, they have offspring who carry those same sentiments they think like the ancestors think or thought because a coon is all a coons are going to raise coon children coon children are going to raise coon grandchildren and so on and so forth this is why we cannot seem to get rid of the coons within our ranks because we let them walk off the, the plantation with us and we allow them to exist and survive amongst us today unfortunately unfortunately we allow it. This is why they're here. Now, they aren't the biggest threat to it. White supremacy in itself is the biggest threat, but they are the bridge to us. This is how they get access to us via the coon, via the sellout, via the tether. The crazy part is they think that they're going to rebuild America with tethers who already hate America. See, us as foundationals freemen we don't hate America we hate the power structure we hate the politics we hate who's running the government but we don't hate America as a whole America as an ideal we don't hate that because America as an ideal that, that ideal exists because of who we are we created that ideal the land of the free the home of the brave what do we do to stop these people we delineate we come together we start to rally around our FBA heritage this is what we do this is how we stop the nonsense sure it's going to be a work in progress sure it's not going to happen overnight but this is what we do this this is how we do it this is how we make it happen you understand this is how we make it happen we don't need these people constantly in our shadow trying to swallow us up and deliver us to the enemy because something that we understand about white supremacy and the white power structure that they don't understand is the fact that, bro, when and if they ever completely topple us, bruh, you're next. Everything that they do to us is the blueprint. Under See, and this is what you need to understand. You tethers and you coons. This is what y'all need to understand. Bro, we are the beta sample to everything that they want to push out into society understand that second and third wave feminism 
they tested it on black women and when they saw that it worked they they spread the mentions out to the rest of the world and then you have women all over the world thinking like western women do it may not necessarily be in large numbers but it's growing and it's there it is there we are the beta sample to everything that they want to introduce to society abortions they introduced that idea to black women in the 50s and the 60s and it has become a whole big thing Roe versus Wade in America it's become a whole political movement now everything that they want to introduce to society they do it through us and the celebrities are usually the vehicle and how they actually deliver these messages and social changes onto us we have such an affinity for a celebrity we have such a uh, a high regard for celebrity and entertainers that we usually follow their lead however when anything positive any positive social change has happened in america it usually comes from the soil it's usually the grassroots that gets these things done the civil rights movement started from the bottom up the black power movement bottom up the black panther movement the bottom up the uh, the george the george floyd floyd uh not insurrections, but the George, George Floyd retaliations, I would say. The bottom up. Celebrities didn't endorse that and promote that and get that started. It was the grassroots that did so. Always remember that the power lies with the people, not with the puppets. Uh, you 